This is the Mister, and it uses an FPGA to replicate the hardware of your favorite 8 and 16-bit era home computers, consoles, and arcade systems. I'm Matt D'Amico, and welcome to episode 22 of Retro Bits. Hey everyone, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be building the Mister, seeing what it's capable of, and discussing some of the pros and cons of hardware emulation. So, what exactly is this in the first place? Before we talk about the Mister, we need to rewind a bit and mention the Mist. This earlier effort was originally designed as an off-the-shelf product that provided FPGA-based hardware emulation of the Amiga and Atari ST, hence the name. Over time, the number of available cores grew to over 25 computer systems, a dozen consoles, and over 100 arcade games. The Mist was based on an Altera Cyclone FPGA, or Field Programmable Gate Array. FPGAs are integrated circuits that feature programmable logic elements, meaning they can be reconfigured to function as any type of hardware desired. In this way, an FPGA can be programmed to replicate the internal architecture of the microchips and circuit boards that comprise a retro computer or console. The MIST's hardware featured an ARM microcontroller running at 48 MHz alongside an FPGA with 24,000 logic elements, 32 MB of DRAM, and VGA output. In 2013, these specs were sufficient to meet the project's goals and allow the platform to grow and support many additional system cores. As the name implies, MISTER is an enhancement of the original MIST. The MISTER is based on the more advanced Jurassic DE10 Nano development board that features 110,000 logic elements, allowing more complicated systems to be emulated in hardware, including things such as the Neo Geo, Intel 486, and more arcade systems. The DE10 also features an 800 MHz dual-core ARM Cortex-A9 processor, 1 GB of DDR3 memory, and HDMI video output. Right, that's all well and good, but how is this different than running an emulator on your PC or Raspberry Pi? In a nutshell, software emulation consists of a translation layer between the modern system's hardware and the emulated machine's instruction sets. This works well enough to run software close to how it was originally intended, but it also introduces input and output latency as translation and processing occur in a serialized manner. For games that require highly precise timing, such as certain fighting games and platformers, these timing differences can ruin the experience. With hardware emulation, the FPGA is reconfigured to accurately reproduce the logic of multiple chips from the original system that operate in parallel, along with its native input and output. In effect, when you load a core, the MISTER becomes the original hardware. The upshot of an FPGA-based implementation means the systems behave exactly like the original hardware, giving you the most accurate and lowest latency experience possible. Further, by reverse engineering retro systems and describing their entire architecture in BHDL, the original hardware can be permanently preserved for the future. Mister is not an off-the-shelf product. It's an open source project. To build your own, there are some required and some optional parts you're going to need, and I'll put a link to each in the description below. To start off with, the most important part is the Jurassic DE10 Nano Development Kit. The DE10 Nano is the heart of the Mister. It features the ARM CPU and FPGA on a single chip, along with HDMI output, USB, Gigabit Ethernet, and a variety of general purpose I.O. that allow for expanding the system with a variety of add-ons. Next is the optional I.O. board. This plugs into the GPIO connectors on the DE10 and gives you a variety of outputs, including analog video, digital or analog audio, buttons, status LEDs, an additional SD card slot, CPU fan, and accessory headers. While the I.O. board is not required to use the MISTER, the analog video output it provides matches that of the original hardware being emulated. There's no buffering or upscaling as there is when using HDMI. In order to achieve latency effectively identical to original hardware, the MISTER developers recommend using the analog video output with a CRT, which is what we're going to attempt today. Another optional part is the powered USB hub. The DE10 only provides a single port for connecting your accessories, so you want to expand that using your own external hub or this one designed specifically to fit the MISTER. 
The hub connects to the single micro USB port on the DE10 and provides seven data ports and a power port to connect your keyboard, mouse, game controllers, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi dongles, etc. You can also use your own external USB hub, but this is convenient, especially if you're planning to mount the Mister in a case. This is an SD RAM module that plugs into the GPIO Zero connector. While the DE10 has a full gigabyte of onboard DDR3 memory, it can't be used by most cores to replicate an original system's RAM. There are a handful of cores that don't require any SD RAM, but many, like the Amiga, Atari 800, and ST, Commodore 64, and NES all require it. The Neo Geo core requires up to 100 megabytes of SD RAM, so while you can opt for one of the smaller available options, you may as well future-proof your build and get the 128 megabyte module, which is currently the largest size available. Here are a few more items you may want to include in your Mr. Build, but none of them are mandatory. This includes the aforementioned Wi-Fi and Bluetooth modules, connectors, and a DC splitter with switch to run the DE10 and USB hub from a single power brick. Of course, there are many other projects and accessories for the Mister that I don't have on hand to demonstrate, such as this serial native accessory converter, aka Snack, that allows you to use original game controllers. There's even a JAMA interface in the works to plug your Mister into real arcade cabinets. Right, time to assemble this thing. First, the factory acrylic top has to come off and the standoffs have to be flipped around. I want to point out that there are multiple configurations depending on your application, so your build may be different, especially if you're mounting your mister in a case. For now, I'll be leaving mine in a naked configuration, but later on I plan to give it a nice home in a proper computer case or game console. The USB hub sits at the bottom of the stack, so we'll start from there and install the standoffs accordingly. These silicone feet were provided with the DE10 kit, which was a nice touch. They install easily and grip well to keep the mister from sliding around on your desk. You can provide your own USB cable, or you can opt to purchase this small bridge board for a couple of dollars. It keeps the install looking tidy and is well worth the price if you're not going to be tucking the mister away inside a case. Now it's time for the I.O. board. This connects to pin headers on both the front and back of the DE10, so make sure everything is properly aligned before applying force.
And last but not least, the SD RAM board. It's not keyed, but the silk screen indicates which way it should be facing. And there we go, one fully assembled Mr. Ready for Software. As delivered, the DE10 includes a small micro SD card with a Linux desktop already installed. You can reuse this card for your mister, but you'll likely want a larger one to hold all of the ROM images and virtual hard drives you're going to create. These days, installation is a breeze. If you're familiar with setting up a Raspberry Pi, the process is nearly the same. Not that long ago, the only way to install Mr. was from Windows, but recently a new installation method known as Mr. Fusion has become available that allows you to write a standard image file to your SD card using readily available tools on any OS. Here, I've downloaded the latest Mr. Fusion image to my PC and am using Win32 Disk Imager to write it to the SD card. You can use any program on any platform you'd like, even DD on Linux. With the SD card written, you can now boot your Mr. for the first time. It will take a few minutes, as the Mr. Fusion image has to resize the small initial file system to the proper geometry of your SD card. That done, connect your Mr. to Ethernet and it will obtain an IP address automatically from DHCP. The next step is to run the built-in update script, which will retrieve the latest version of the Mr. software, as well as the most current versions of all publicly available cores. The first time you run update, it can take quite a while, so go make some tea or coffee and come back in 10 minutes. Mr.'s underlying OS is still Linux, but it's highly optimized and starts up faster than most monitors wake up from sleep, so there's barely any noticeable wait time. Once the update is complete, you're ready to start adding software and testing out the available cores. This should give you an idea of what systems, game consoles, and arcade machines are currently available. More are being added all the time, and many existing systems receive updates and new features regularly as well. For example, Minimig, the Amiga core, just received an update that gives it retargetable graphics, essentially an add-on video card that allows the Amiga to run at modern resolutions and color depths. Here, I'm FTPing software directly to the MISTER from my PC. Each system has its own directory where you'll put your disk images, ROM files, and virtual hard drives. Now all that's left to do is fire up the cores and start running some software. For the most authentic period correct experience, I want to connect the MISTER to a 240p CRT using RGB. The analog video port supports many different output formats, including 15 and 31 kHz RGB with HV Sync, C Sync, Sync on Green, and even Component Out. Different cores support different output formats, but the default setting can be configured in the MISTER INI file. In the latest unboxing video, I picked up this VGA cable from the thrift store for a dollar and ordered the SCART connector on eBay. I'll cut off one end of the VGA cable and connect up the RGB ground and sync wires accordingly. An old set of headphones donated their 8th inch connector so I can pass audio through the SCART connector as well.
I'll trace out each pin on the VGA cable and write down the wire's color on my SCART pinout diagram so I don't make any mistakes when wiring this up. I like to tin each of the wires, as well as the pins on the SCART connector itself, before trying to solder them together. I also used the meter to trace the wires in the audio cable, but it turns out some of them didn't have continuity. That's probably why those headphones were in the box of scrap parts to begin with. I can always add the audio jack in later though. Ugh, I wish someone would have reminded me that this bit needs to go on before you start soldering. No matter, I can fix it another time. The important thing is the cable works. Slug. You guys still with me? All right, cool. Well, that should give you a pretty good idea of what the Mister is currently capable of. If you're playing on a modern display, there are a number of filters you can apply to adjust the display size and simulate CRT scan lines if that's your thing. Another neat feature of the Mister is the built-in cheat engine. When you run the update script for the first time, cheat data for a number of consoles is downloaded to the SD card, over 8,000 different games worth. To use it, 
simply select which cheat to activate from the menu while in-game, and maybe you can finally beat this thing too. Earlier, I mentioned hard disk images, so let's take a quick tour of some of the more advanced systems on the Mister, starting with the Minimig. Minimig is a well-known Amiga FPGA core that was ported over to the Mister. On the DE10 hardware, it's able to replicate an AGA Amiga 1200 or 4000 with a Motorola 68020 processor, along with 2 megs of chip and 256 megs of fast RAM. The core was just recently updated to support retargetable graphics using the Picasso 96 driver and can seamlessly switch between full HD resolutions and native OCS, ECS, or AGA programs. Minimig supports booting from both floppy as well as hard drive images. As I've said before, Amiga Forever grants you a license to use any kickstart and Amiga OS up to version 3.1 for your emulation needs. It has an easy-to-use interface that allows you to export ROMs and disk images that the Mister can use natively. Here, I'll export a ROM file for the A1200 and use the ADF images to install my virtual hard drive. As with the SCSI to SD device I used in the Amiga 3000 episode, WinUAE can be used to create a hard disk image and install Amiga OS using your desktop PC. After loading Better Workbench, WHD Load, and some games and demos, I simply FTP'd the hard drive image over to the Mister. The Minimig Core also implements a driver that lets you access the Mister's SD card file system directly. This makes it a snap to copy files into your virtual hard drive image, such as this game that I previously FTP'd over. The last core I'll demonstrate is AO486. This core replicates a 486DX33 with 256 megs of RAM, SVGA, and a Sound Blaster 16. Up to four hard disks are supported along with two CD-ROMs, and, like Minimig, has shared boulder support. It'll run Windows 3.1 or 95 and can even connect to the internet using PPP. <laughs> So, is Mr. worth the money? Well, that depends. If you've been happy with the performance of MAME or other software-based emulators on your PC or Raspberry Pi, then it may be more difficult to justify the price of admission, especially considering a Pi 3B Plus is only $35. If you enjoy tinkering or want the most faithful analog RGB output with minimal latency, FPGA-based emulation is definitely something you should consider. Another way to look at it is to add up how much it would cost to buy an Amiga 1200 and then upgrade it with more RAM, a hard drive, scan doubler, and retargetable graphics card. Suddenly, the Mister looks like a pretty attractive option. 
It may not be as powerful as the latest Vampire standalone, but what it can do is solid and new features are constantly being added. That, and it's also a 486, a Neo Geo, and dozens of other systems. Okay, time to recap. Reasons you might want to build your own mister? First, FPGA-based hardware implementation is more accurate than software-based emulation. This means decreased input and output latency when precise timing is essential. It's also a fun project to build, configure, and tinker with, especially considering there are frequent updates and new features to try out all the time. As the chips in original vintage hardware start to fail due to age, the act of preserving their architecture in VHDL means they'll be available and can be reproduced in the future. Last, the MISTER is much less expensive than collecting dozens of old systems, never mind upgrading them. On the flip side, there are some drawbacks to consider as well. The first is that unlike a PC or Raspberry Pi, the MISTER cannot simply run MAME. Each arcade system has to be implemented separately, and while there are nearly a hundred arcade games available, with more being added all the time, it's a far cry from the thousands and thousands available to software emulators. Next, the FPGA design limits the complexity and clock speeds that can be achieved in hardware emulation, so it's unlikely we'll see any 5th gen consoles on the DE10 Nano's hardware. While some love to tinker, others prefer an off-the-shelf solution. While it is easier than ever to build and configure a MISTER, it does require reading and some trial and error. Some familiarity with Linux command line and VI will also help. Due to the layout of the DE10 development board, there will be wires sticking out in every direction. It is possible to tidy things up by transplanting all the parts into a larger case and using IO extension cables, but by itself the MISTER isn't a looker. With the snack boards, you can make use of original controllers, light guns, and the like, but you won't be plugging in any Zora or ISA cards, nor will your favorite vintage computer's hardware add-ons work here. And once again, we come back to the price tag. A $35 Raspberry Pi will emulate tens of thousands of titles and do it well. It's up to you to decide if the Mister's value proposition aligns with your requirements and budget or not. So there we have it, the Mister and FPGA hardware emulation. Whether or not it's cost effective or meets your particular needs, it's undeniably an amazing project with many talented developers contributing and improving the tech. I for one am looking forward to seeing how it evolves in the future. I hope you enjoyed this bit, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Retro Bits.